हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ द ब्रिज कोर्स आई एम छवि सहाय असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट ए आई एस एस एम एस कॉलेज ऑफ होटल मैनेजमेंट एंड केटरिंग टेक्नोलॉजी द सब्जेक्ट वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इन द सेशन इज जोग्राफी द चैप्टर इज पॉलिटिकल मैप ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड द टॉपिक वी आर कवरिंग टूडे इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू वर्ल्ड पॉलिटिकल जोग्राफी लेट्स स्टार्ट अ जर्नी इन टू द रेलम ऑफ political geography today we will understand the interplay, interplay between politics geography we'll explore the definition the significance and various aspects related to this in our world as we know there are seven continents and around 195 countries it is a very vast world we also have a very diverse geography so it is very important for us to understand it in the light of politics now what is political geography political geography is the study of how spatial structures and processes shape the political outcomes it goes into the territories boundaries how states are formed what do we mean by geopolitics it offers insights into the distribution of power why we consider some countries as more powerful compared to the other countries why some are developed and some are developing countries and we'll also see resources how they play on the global stage if we put simply the word political geography is a study of how humans have divided up the earth surface they've done so for better management and control purposes many people have tried to exert control over the entire physical world to exert power for religious economic or cultural reasons now let's begin at the very base that is what defines a state we are talking about the independent states the various countries independent states are the primary building blocks of the world political map a state which we also call by the name of a nation or a country is a territory with defined boundaries organized into a political unit and it is ruled by an established government whether it's democratic whether it's the monarchy that is besides the point and the government has control over its internal and foreign affairs when a state has total control over its internal and foreign affairs it is called as a sovereign state a location claimed by a sovereign state is called as a territory according to the united nations in the year 2016 the world has 193 nations however there do exist many dispute related to the boundaries a state is a sovereign political entity with a defined territory set population government and it has the capacity to enter into relations with other states its sovereignty grants it exclusive authority over internal affairs and external relations what is the meaning of word sovereign many times you would have heard it in the news that a particular country objects to another country for saying something about the particular country they say that this is our internal affair and we will not accept any interference in it so there the word sovereignty comes into place international law defines sovereign state as having a permanent pol- population defined territory a government not any other under any other and the capacity to interact with other states 
it is commonly understood that a sovereign state is independent in simple words it is a government free from any external control now what are some components of the state territory provides the physical space over which the state exercises control population refers to the people who inhabit the territory and subject to the state's authority whoever is living in that particular country is governed by the rules of that country or the nation government administers laws and policies within the state boundaries sovereignty denotes the supreme authority of the state to govern itself without any external interference now let's see what type of states are there primarily we have two types unitary states and federal states unitary states have a power concentration at the national level where sub national units having limited autonomy means there's one government and the smaller level of government at various levels has less power compared to the central power whereas in federal states the distribution of power between the central government and the sub national units that is the governments at the state level or the city level have more or greater autonomy a constitution of such countries can be either unitary or federal a unitary system is governed constitutionally as one single unit with one constitutionally created legislature but in the federal constitution there is a division of power between federal and the state government here are some differences between the federal government and unitary government federal government or unitary government both have multiple hierarchy levels both have central authority and states or the provinces both are sovereign there is no hierarchy of sovereign powers the central or nation national rules override the state rules means central government has the ultimate say the states have no authority to pass their own laws everybody is governed by the central laws and the central or na national government can order the states to do anything as required there is a balance between levels of government examples of federal states would include the united states of america and germany the federal government has a huge percentage of power examples would include japan france and saudi arabia power and responsibilities are shared between the national government and the government at the local level power is placed in one central governing system now we move on to what is the process of a state formation there are various processes through which a state is formed they they emerge through processes such as colonization decolonization secession and annexation these are just few examples sometimes historical events cultural identities and geographical factors also influence the formation or the evolution of the state we'll see all the definitions just one by one in brief colonization means subjugation of one country by another leading to political social and economic change or an act or an instance of colonizing such as establishing of a colony subjugation of people means we the uh, the country which is colonizing them starts ruling them it is a process of establishing control over foreign territories or the people for the purpose of 
exploitation and possibly settlement by setting up colonies. In this context, the example is that India was a British colony till we gained independence in 1947. Decolonization, the exact opposite of colonization, it is a process by which colonies become independent from the colonizing country. Decolonization was gradual and peaceful for some of the British colonies but in some cases it was violent also where the native rebellions were energized by the nationalism. In the year 1991 South Africa became an independent nation because of decolonization. Next comes secession. It is a formal withdrawal of a group from a political entity. The process begins once a group proclaims an act of secession. A secession attempt might be violent or peaceful but the goal is to create a new state or an entity which is independent of the group or territory from which it seceded. Example being Bangladesh leaving Pakistan. Bangladesh which was formerly called as East Pakistan seceded from Pakistan. Bangladesh declared its independence from Pakistan. Two sides fought a brief but vicious nine month war before Pakistan was forced to recognize that Bangladeshi secession was legitimate. The, ne the next one being annexation. The act of taking possession of land or a country particularly by force or without any consent. Unlike secession where territory is given or sold through a treaty, annexation is a unilateral act which is made effective by actual possession and it is legalized by general recognition. Annexation is frequently preceded by a conquest or military occupation of a territory. The example of annexation can be the German annexation of Austria in the year 1938 before the Second World War. Various factors that influence the state formation, historical events shape the political boundaries while cultural identities define the collective identity of a state's population. Geographical factors such as natural resources like mountain ranges etc. influence the state boundaries and also territorial claims. What is the meaning of boundaries? Just let's establish that. Boundaries are lines that delineate the territorial limits of state. They can be natural, like in case of India, Himalayas on the one side. It can be rivers. It can be artificially drawn lines, man-made lines or cultural based on the ethnic or the linguistic division. What is the function of a boundary? Boundary defines the extent of a state's territory. It controls the movement across the borders and it facilitates governance. The government is aware what is the boundary that they have to govern. But it demarcates the area of jurisdiction. What do we mean by some border disputes? Causes of border disputes arise from conflicting territorial claims, historical grievances, ethnic tensions, resource competition and due to strategic interests also. Some examples of uh, border disputes that we have around the world are the islands in the South China Sea. It is contested between Philippines and China. Kuril Islands dispute between Russia and Japan. Antarctica. A number of countries including United Kingdom, France and Argentina have made claims over this continent. But these claims have not been recognized by the international community since the signature of Antarctica Treaty in the year 1959. Israel and Palestine 
in the light of the present offensive going on it is impossible to ignore the israel and palestine conflict it is a source of insecurity for the middle east and for the world at large we will now see some contemporary issues in political geography it is essential to recognize that our world is constantly evolving or changing and there are a lot of issues that affect the politics the geography and the society at large some of the challenges we will see now that has implications on the global landscape first climate change and resource management climate change poses a significant threat to the political stability and resource management rising sea levels extreme weather events shifting climatic patterns they are disrupting the ecosystems and they change the resource availability and hence increase the conflict over land water and energy resources political decisions regarding the reduction of such climatic changes various adaptation measures and international cooperation are crucial in addressing these challenges to ensure that sustainable resource management happens for the future generations the next challenge is cyber security and digital geopolitics the digital revolution has transformed the geopolitical landscape it has introduced new dimensions of power influence and security threats there are cyber attacks information warfare and digital espionage that challenges national security and also international relations states manage this complexity of cyber security by forming rules by strengthening defense capabilities and engaging in diplomatic efforts to establish norms and agreements third challenge is globalization and its effect on state sovereignty globalization characterized by increased interconnectedness and interdependence has both helped as well as challenged the state sovereignty there are various mncs or multinational corporations various ngos or non governmental organizations that influence the traditional state boundaries they help us in reshaping the policy making process some countries struggle with the tension between maintaining sovereignty and participating in the global network fourth challenge is migration and refugee crisis migration and refugee crisis poses a complex political social social and humanitarian challenge which has a lot of implication on the geopolitics displacement of refugees because of conflicts environmental degradation and economic hardships disrupts various communities strains the resources and there is a lot of tension between the host country and the countries to which these refugees go to sometimes the political response varies from border control to international cooperation and also in relation to humanitarian aid the fifth challenge is territorial dispute and geopolitical tension territorial disputes remain a persistent source of tension often which is fueled by historical grievances ethnic rivalries and strategic interests there are sometimes conflicting conflicting claims over land or the maritime boundaries and the natural resources diplomatic negotiations legal mechanisms and some types of conflict resolutions are essential to resolve this territorial dispute to prevent any other conflict from happening and leading to a bigger geopolitical crisis now we've come to the end of this session to conclude we have covered 
some contemporary issues in the political geography which highlight the interconnectedness of politics and geography we have also seen what is the meaning of a state what leads to state formation what is the meaning of boundary and what are some border disputes thank you